or maybe one day that'll be part of those merge. Yeah, we're still kind of at the mercy of phase two with those kind of calls. Cool. So real quick, um, everybody remembers tragedy in Cincinnati a couple of years ago. Um, Rapid SOS sends the GPS with every call. So in the green tab, it says on the screen, I take the call, I've got Rapid SOS data. So I go to the data, I've got the GPS data. That's all I'm getting uh, without the full integration of Rapid SOS in our CPE. Okay, I want more than that, I go to Rapid SOS, I do a fuller integration. I may bring that into my mapping. I may bring it into CAD, but it's here. Big deal. I actually asked somebody in Montana where that was on this screen and they knew. So you guys know this stuff better than I do, but let's let the technology do it for us. This is where that call is. It's in the parking lot. It's actually right there. That's the GPS for that call. I think this is in Sioux Falls. Yes. But it's not over here. It's not across the parking lot. It's right there. So I know where to go. That's the southeast corner or, or whatever it is. If I'm familiar with the site, I can zoom out on Google. I can zoom in to get to that exact location. So those things are, are huge uh, for responses. Okay, this is all stuff we talked about. Big resource drain. Using things we're used to. Cad and I <laughs> Am I the only person that sees this movie on and watches it every time? <laughs> Please tell me I'm not. You know, me and my kids. So phase zero, phase one, phase two, we all know what these things are, but that GPS is huge. And someday in the future, we'll get that elevation as well. So we'll be able to present that, and that's what you guys need for critical response and exact location information. It's kind of where we're working as an organization, and I think where the industry is. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Rob. We're going to take about thank 10 you. minutes to set up for the next one, so everybody take a break. Restrooms are out the door to the left again, both doors.
He moved that down. He gave you some albums. Okay, we're going to get started. Um, this is probably the most well-known guy in the room. Um, Roger Hickson is the technical advisor to the ESINAC Committee for NG911, and, and I hate to use the word expert, but you are an expert. So the expert. The expert. Right? Um, so he's he pushed it down a little bit. And, and the NEA technical director. I'm sorry. And also. Um, we, we left some time in this presentation for questions because we thought this would be the time that some of you are kind of stuck on certain things. Um, I know Brian covered a lot of things um, about products as well as about how the ESI works a little bit, but or, or and how the core will work. But this will be more in depth and, and also a chance for you to ask specific questions. So, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yes. How many people didn't recognize my name? Really? Are you serious? Come on. <laughs> Hard to believe. Okay. Um, by the time we're done, you will not believe that NG91 is a buzzword. Working off my predecessor <laughs> presentation. Um, the NG91 core services part, which is primarily all I'm going to talk about, but relates also to capabilities that the VSAP equipment can provide in conjunction with NG91 core services and is dependent upon what the carriers do in terms of providing calls and particularly location information. And it will come into play here pretty quick. Um, so I try to keep this as simple as possible. So there's a slide we use quite often to show that NG91 and uh, the radio network and the whole thing. Now you'll notice that that breaks out in the middle is labeled engine on core services. It's not labeled ESI net. And there's a reason for that, which we'll get into right now. Engine on is most basic. Real content of engine 911 is in blue. It's the originating service providers providing calls and the using GIS data sets and sign that. But it is not ESI net. There are two two separate distinct things. Vendors and other people tend to refer to it all the time as DSI net, DSI net, DSI net. DSI net is pretty stupid. It doesn't know how to do software functions in Engine 91. So, Engine 91 is at least as important, if not more important, in some ways as the DSI net itself. The DSI net is a physical IP transport network. We'll come back to this. So, we need to get the call from the originating service providers to the people we refer to as the SI net. But in order to make that work, we need a function to validate the direct call. So we need a director to know what to do. So then we need a function to populate and manage the directory in Engine 91, state, county, local. There's layers that have to deal with the routing control aspect for a given location. And when the call comes in and has a location associated with it, not just phase one, but actual caller location estimate, 
that director which consults that directory and says for this location what's the associated PSAC? And the GIS database provides that because it's set up to handle it. So uh, we call those an engine I want to deny. Probably you guys. The red 